Hello and welcome to Maker Hanger. My name's Lucas Weekly, and today we're going to be building the entire Maker Trainer 2. That means we're going to lay out the PDF plans, cut out the foam, assemble the body, then we're going to go paint it and then install the electronics and get it ready to fly. So let's get started. But before we do, here are the tools you're going to need. Here are the new PDF plans. They're much smaller than last year's. Uh, there's only 14 pages, but they're exactly the same as the previous year. So they lay out all the same way. So I've already laid them out and attached them to the foam board. You can see that right here. If you want more information about how to do this, you can go check out episode nine of last season of Maker Hanger. And I explained step-by-step -step on how to lay this out and attach it to the foam. Okay, anyway, we have a couple new lines on this PDF plan that we're gonna go over really quick. And the first one is called Mark. So right here on the PDF plans, there's this marked area and it's just a dotted line. You're not gonna do anything to this, no scoring, no cutting or anything. We're just gonna mark the corners so that we can see them later after uh, we assemble the airplane. So I'm just gonna mark the corners. This is where the tail boom is gonna to attach to the main wing. So we definitely wanna see where this is going to be. There's also another mark right here for the servo. I'm just going to cut out where it's going to go right here. No need to do all the other corners because we just need one corner to line it up. And there's a couple marks around the plans that you're going to have to find and do the same thing. Okay, so the next section is going to be this uh, remove paper section. And this is this hatched pattern and then there's some dashed lines next to it. Just like right here. And we're going to remove the top layer of paper and the foam underneath, but we're going to leave the bottom layer of paper intact. This is going to allow us to fold this piece of foam up and over the edge so that we can make this tail boom very strong. And there's a couple places around the uh, plans that use this technique as well. Now, another one that we have is this section that has kind of a gravelly pattern in between. This is where we're going to remove just the top layer of paper. So you can see that over here where we're going to remove the paper from the top surface of these wing sections. Now, one thing to keep in mind is uh, we're going to score it right here and here but then the wing has a step to it, an airfoil, and then this is uh, one part of the wing and this is another. So we're gonna cut it down this solid line right here. Now, one thing to keep in note uh, as well is this season we also have notes on the plans. And this one says cut and remove the paper from the opposite side. So this whole section needs to be done on the reverse side. This is gonna be the bottom of the wing so that we need to do this on the top. And now that's very important and keep that in mind when you're cutting out the plans. So we're just gonna mark the edges of the foam so that we can transfer those lines onto the top. Now there's a couple more notes around here. These lines, which are for breaking the control surface off of the vertical stabilizer so you have rudder control, they're optional too. The plane will fly just the same without them. It's just, it gives you an extra level of control. Now for this uh, plan and the ones that I'm going to be building for you today, I'm not going to cut out this line. But if you do, you're going to bevel the edge just like right here, like we're going to do on the elevator, and you're going to mount the servo right here. And that's just what you're going to do. I'm not going to do that because I just want this to be a very simple airplane. Okay, moving on to the other sheet. So this is the fuselage and you can see more of those remove the foam sections right here. This is where we're gonna make the box layout for the fuselage. And there's also this optional section right here. It's just a big square where we're gonna remove the paper. And this will cover up the front of the nose if you don't want it to be all open. So this is just if you wanna have like a fun flying airplane instead of an FPV one. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and attach it today because I want just a fun flying airplane. So this is optional, you don't have to do it. If you uh, don't have it on, then you can mount cameras and stuff in the uh, front of the nose. Also, here's the elevator. Here's the score line, which we're gonna make the control surface on. And then this is where the servo is gonna go. So that's the plans. And uh, I'm gonna come back as soon as I finish cutting these out. If you're planning on using a foam that doesn't have a paper backing, you're gonna have to do a couple things differently. So for any place that you're gonna have to remove the foam and make a joint that bends, all you have to do is add some packing tape to the opposite side. Then score on the line for the plans and go all the way through the foam, but not the packing tape. And then all you have to do is just break the joint apart and remove the center foam pieces. Here here I'm using 6mm hobby foam, but you can also use 6mm Depron. There'll be links in the description where you can buy them. Once you finish your cuts, the effect is exactly the same as if you removed the top layer of paper and the foam of ready board foam. Okay, so now that we've gotten everything cut out, I've also taken out all the foam pieces and I've beveled the edges out of the elevator and the aileron control surfaces. Also, another thing that you're gonna have to do is it's probably smart to give the ailerons a little bit more space to move around. That's what I've done here. You just cut a little bit into the aileron control surface 
so that this is moving freely. Also, another thing that you have to do is on the small step for the wing, you need to flip it around and cut about an inch off of the leading edge and then peel off the paper again. This is so that when we glue these two sections together, we can sand the front edge all the way to a point instead of having to interrupt with the uh, paper and the paper does not sand. Okay, so now we're gonna start gluing everything together and I'm gonna focus first on the tail booms. And these are the hardest part to glue, but uh, we'll get through them pretty easily. So let's get started. Okay, these tail booms are assembled kind of like triangles. And the way we're gonna do it is these edges go up and over the bottom piece and then they come at an angle and the angle is determined on where they intersect. So you bring them both up and over and then you can see how it becomes a triangle. So now we're gonna put glue in one side at a time, bring up both sides so that we can get the angle right and then uh, hold it there until it dries. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Now just hold this together until it's completely cooled. Okay, and now to finish this off, you're gonna grab a scrap piece of foam and we're going to run a bead about halfway across this top surface and then drag this across and squeegee the glue across this entire seam. And then we're gonna wipe off the edges and make sure that it all dries by pinching it in place. So let me start doing that. Okay, so once you do that, you're always gonna have a little bit of excess that comes off over the edges. And while it's still a little bit warm, we can go ahead and peel that off upwards. Get as much as you can off of it. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other booms. Now that we've gotten both of the tail booms done, we can set these aside and work on the fuselage. So all we have to do in this is take one of the sides and bring it up and over the base and then glue it in place right there at a 90 degree angle, do the same thing to the other side, and then to the top. Now we're not gonna glue the top because this is gonna turn into your battery hatch and how you're gonna get to your battery. So just leave that there. You can position it so that we get both of the sides squared up and uh, that's what we're gonna do right now. So You can take a scrap piece of foam and squeegee out some of the hot glue. Okay, so there are some places on this line where when I scored, I accidentally went through both layers of foam and it doesn't matter as long as most of it is all uh, still paper, the glue will seep through and fill up your gaps. So you're good if you mess up a little bit. So if you wanna put on your front, you removed your paper from one of the sides so it's still flexible and we are going to position it right here. And I am gonna go ahead and bend it upwards at this spot. Okay, so I'm gonna attach this to the bottom first. I flipped the fuselage upside down. And we're going to get this edge right here. Also along here, and some inside here. Once the glue on the bottom is completely dry, you can start shaping up the top. So I am going to add glue around the edges and start shaping this. and you wanna hold this until it's completely dry because it'll just spring back if you don't. Now that the front's glued on, you can see that there's a gap between the hatch and the front of the nose, and that's intentional. That's for air cooling so that your ESC and all your electronics on the inside don't get too hot. Now, if you have a cooler way of doing this, then you can always fill in this gap and then do whatever you wanna do, but uh, this is just the default way of doing it. Make it your own and post your pictures on the Maker Hanger Google Plus page. Now we're gonna glue the two wing sections together, and you can't do this with hot glue because the hot glue would uh, cool before you could get it all on. So what we're gonna use is our 3M Super 77 uh, spray adhesive. And this is kind of like uh, rubber cement where you uh, spray both sides, let it dry for a little bit and then put it together and it'll be permanently bonded. Now, of course, you're not gonna be using that much just like the CA, but you can find a ton more uses for this on different projects and it's really useful for mounting things onto like paper or anything else. So let's go glue these together and then we'll also sand the leading edge. 
So I'm making sure I get really good coverage on the leading edge of the top of the main wing and then covering the entire bottom surface of the step. Then make sure that everything's lined up and then push it down. The second that it touches, it won't be coming apart. Then I wrapped a piece of sandpaper over a block of wood. Then you just gotta keep sanding and get the shape of the airfoil so that it tapers from the leading edge all the way up to the step. Once you have the shape roughed out, take off the block of wood and then use your hand so you can smooth out the shape. It should look something like this when you're done. Now that we've gotten the wing glued together and we've beveled the leading edge, what we have now is called a KF airfoil. And from last year we had a conventional airfoil. This time it's something simpler to build, but it's just as effective. So what happens is the air will go over the top and then it'll start making a vortice inside of this area. And that's what the step does. It breaks apart the air and makes a cushion. And so then the rest of the air will follow over that cushion of air and be pretty much frictionless for the rest of the way over. Now this has a bunch of advantages because of that. It'll keep the air from uh, letting the wing stall. And there's a bunch of other characteristics that uh, we can obviously go into more depth about, but I won't right now. Anyway, that's the airfoil, if you were wondering. And now we're gonna finish gluing together the wing. Now we flip the wing over and you can see the marks that we've made previously for our tail booms. Now there are two uh, layers of foam in between this being level so that I'm gonna put the elevator underneath the step and then I'm gonna put one of the vertical stabilizers here too so that we get the proper spacing when we go to glue this so that it's level with the top and we don't get any uh, inconsistencies. So what I'm gonna do is line it up, just do a dry fit to see how this is all gonna go together and how I'm gonna glue it. And then I'm going to fill this area with glue. Then attach the boom and make sure it's all lined up. Okay, now that we have the two tail booms attached, we're gonna attach the elevator. So I'm gonna flip this over and the elevator is really easy to glue on. You line it up so that the elevator can still move and it goes edge to edge and that's it. So I am going to kind of make a little mark with my X-Acto so I can just see where I'm gonna to glue to and where I'm gonna line up the elevator to. And you're doing this flush with the back and you're lining up the edges. And now I'm going to attach the vertical stabilizers. So you're just lining up to the edge of the boom and the edge of the foam there. I'm gonna make a little mark right here so I see where to glue. I'm going to add some glue right here and then just glue it on. And your tail is now complete. So the elevator moves and the, your rudders would move if you had the rudder control surfaces, but uh, it's just that simple to put together. Now we're gonna attach the fuselage. So I've put the uh, vertical stabilizers over the table so it's gonna make this easier. And now what we're gonna do is I'm going to fold this upwards, this, so it's not gonna get in our way. And these slots line up with these slots so there's no measuring. You just have to put this down. And uh, all we have to do is put a bead of glue from here all the way to the edge on the fuselage. So let me do that really quick. And now I'm just gonna add a little bead of glue on the outside to help reinforce it. And now the entire Maker Trainer 2 is assembled. And next step is we're going to prepare it to be painted. And you'll need all these tools and materials to paint your airplane. In preparation for spray painting, we're gonna cover the entire plane in a polyurethane, and this one is Minwax, and you wanna look for the ones that aren't water-based so that the paper doesn't separate from the foam. To apply it, I'm just using a paper towel, and I'm liberally putting a lot of it on so it soaks through the paper, and then I'm taking the other side of the paper towel and wiping off the excess. This is essentially putting a layer of packing tape all across your airplane, which will waterproof it and make it so it doesn't melt when you spray paint it. Make sure you cover every surface and edge completely and evenly. 
Once you've finished covering the entire airplane, set it up to dry for a couple hours and then come back and do another coat. I do three coats to get a nice hard outer shell, and then after your last coat, let it set for about 24 hours. And then to tape up the airplane for painting, I'm using frog green painter's tape. And I like this a little bit better because it sticks less but has a better edge than blue painter's tape. I use some brown paper to cover up all the areas that I wasn't painting, and then you can use any spray paint because the minwax is protecting the foam. I let the first color dry completely and then I retaped up the plane in the second pattern for the second color. So now I've finished painting the airplane, you can see that the minwax gave it kind of an off-white look. If you don't like that, you can paint the whole thing white, but I didn't do that. And then you can just see that I taped off some areas and painted it two colors. Of course, you can do whatever you want with your paint. It's up to you. So anyway, the paint on the control surfaces made them a little bit stiff and some of them got removed from the paper. So what we're gonna do is repair these first before we install the electronics. So when you fold the control surface back, you can see that there's some paper separation on the hinge. Now the way that we can fix this is by just pushing this back together. And once we have it in place, we're gonna make the two surfaces level. And then I'm going to take some hot glue, put a little bit on here and then squeegee it across so that it fills the whole gaps and it makes a little tiny film and uh, then that will allow it to still move, but it'll strengthen the hinge. Now that I've squeegeed this on, you wanna make sure it's completely cool before you start moving it around because then it can get stuck together and very hard to take apart. So while you wait for this to cool down, you can do the other control surfaces. Now I'm going to set this aside while it's all cooling off and we'll take a look at the electronics. Here's the electronics you're going to need. I only have three servos because I'm not going to have the rudder control. If you are going to have rudder control then you need five servos. Uh, other than that, all these electronics are going to be the same. I did have to solder on 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors onto the motor because I didn't have them on it. Um, I covered this last season so you can go check out that video to see how exactly to solder on these connectors. Other than that, then I have another Lemon RX receiver that'll go with my orange T6 uh, battery and then the ESC. So let's take a look at the kit. Here's what the kit should look like when you get it. So I'm gonna open this up and take out the inside. We have a bag and inside here, we have our 3D printed motor mount. We have five easy connectors, just in case you wanna add rudders later. You get five control horns and you get all the hardware to mount your motor and you get all the music wire for your control linkages. The longest ones are for your rudders if you want to put those on. Your two middle ones are for your aileron and then your shortest one is for your elevator. So now let's go and start building the airplane. Now we're going to build the motor assembly that'll go on the airplane. First off, I'm going to take off the motor mount that's on the motor and we're going to set the motor and its prop adapter aside for a second. I'm gonna take out all the bolts and nuts from my hardware bag from the kit. And I'm going to put the motor mount on here and start putting the bolts through. I'm just using a little hex driver to bring these in. And then we're gonna put the nuts on the opposite side. Okay, now that we've gotten everything mounted, I'm gonna attach the motor. So the wires are going to go down towards one of these faces and that's because this is going to go in between the foam and you want this to go inside of your body. So I'm going to mount it like that and then tighten down these. And if you have Loctite, definitely put it on these, they fall out very easily. Okay, now we're going to attach the prop saver. So this just slides over the shaft. You can unscrew these by hand, get it over. And we're going to use just a normal Phillips head, tighten each side a little bit. And we're just gonna use a normal Phillips driver to attach this on. And you're gonna do a little bit on each side until it's completely tightened. Now your motor is all assembled and we're gonna mount the propeller later on when we're ready to fly. I'm also just gonna connect the motor to the ESC right now. And that way we can position it inside the airplane. Okay, there we go. So let's get the airplane and put this on. Now I'm gonna fish the ESC through here. And then the motor mount just goes 
on top of the foam and it goes into that notch we made so we know it's perfectly centered and you can just eyeball it to get it aligned properly. And now that's installed. We're gonna put a little bit of glue inside of the gap right here and around the edges to hold it in place. So let me do that really quick. So I'm just gonna put a little bit inside here and inside here. and just make sure it's aligned. While you're waiting on the glue to dry, make sure that there's no glue piling up on the motor shaft. Now, if your motor isn't spinning freely, then you can remove the two set screws on the side, pop out the motor, clean out the inside, and then pop it back in and make sure that it's moving smoothly. If it's not, you'll fry your motor. So anyway, let's move on to installing the servos. Now I have my three servos and the only thing you have to do besides putting on the single-sided control arm is we need to remove all the stickers because we're gonna be gluing these on their side and we don't want them to just pop off because the stickers are holding them on. So that's just you. And we're gonna do that for all of them. Okay, now all our servos are ready to be glued on. So installing the elevator servo is really simple. You need to make sure that the arm or the moving part is farthest away from the elevator so you have more space. Slide the wire through the hole, put it through here. And then all we have to do is glue on these two little tabs and that'll hold it in place. We'll wire this up in a second, but now let's go install the aileron servos. Okay, remember where we made those two little corner marks before? That's where the servo is gonna line up in. And we're gonna do the same thing as the elevator, where the part where the servo is moving is farther away from the control surface, so we have more space. Now I'm just gonna add some glue to the bottom and secure it in place. And I'll do the same thing for the other side. We'll wire these up in a second, but for now, I'm gonna thread it through the hole in the side of the fuselage. I have this music wire that has a little hook on the end of it. You can use anything like a coat hanger or something like that. I'm gonna thread it through our tail boom so I can pick up the servo extension on the other side. Okay, now I'm gonna install the linkage between the servo and the control surface. And we're gonna start with the elevator first. So the first thing that we have to do is we need to open up one of these holes big enough that we can fit our music wire in. And you can use a 16th of an inch drill bit and I'm gonna go into the middle hole on the servo arm. Now we're going to make a Z bend in one of the sides of this music wire with a pair of pliers, put it in like that, bend and then bend it the opposite way. Okay, so now we're gonna install this into our servo arm. Now we're gonna prepare our control horn. So we're gonna drill out these holes to the 16th of an inch as well. And I'm gonna assemble one of these easy connectors on it. We're gonna mount the easy connector on this side and I'm gonna put it on the top hole so I have more precision. And I'm gonna put that little half dome on it and press this down on the table. Okay, now once that's clicked into place, put the wire through it just like that and line it up straight. And then I'm going to line up the holes so that they're over the seam. And I'm just gonna press down to mark into the foam where I'm gonna cut. Now where I see, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna make a little score in here. I'm gonna remove this now because I know where it's gonna go. I'm gonna widen up the hole by using its edge and smush it down in. And now I'm gonna make sure that the holes are over the seam. So I do need to push this back a little bit. That worked good. And now I'm just gonna glue this in. So with the glue in while it's cooling, I'm just gonna make sure it's all lined up. Okay, now I'm gonna pop off the servo arm, put the music wire underneath and thread it through the easy connector and reinstall the servo arm. And now I'm just gonna finger tighten the set screw on so that later on when we turn everything on, we can zero out these control surfaces. Okay, let's move on to the aileron. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna drill out servo arm first. So you can see how we drilled out the third hole from the end. Now with this still off, we're gonna install the easy connector because it's just easier to install it on the servo side this time. Once that's attached, I'm just gonna put it back on the servo. I'm gonna take another one of our control horns and drill it out. Now with this drilled out, we're gonna take one of our aileron push rods, which are the three inch long sections or the medium length ones, and there's two of them. And we're gonna put a Z bend in one end. The Z bend's gonna go through the top hole on the control horn, and then it's gonna go through the easy connector. Okay, we're gonna line this up straight out there, make sure the holes are over the seam and press down. And now we see where we have to score. 
I'm gonna line it up with the seam again. Now I'll put the set screw in and do the same thing for the other side. Here's our receiver. I have the bind plug installed right now because we'll be binding it to our transmitter in a second. But now let's go ahead and plug in our wires. So our first connection is gonna be our ESC into the throttle spot and make sure the signal goes up. Then we're gonna plug in our elevator, which goes into skip one, go into the next. And now instead of doing a uh, y splitter on the aileron spot I'm going to just do uh, doulerons so I'm gonna put one into the aileron spot and one into the back auxiliary one spot so this one I don't know which one it's gonna be yet so we'll set that up in a second I'll just plug one in right here first and then the other and we'll come into our auxiliary one spot okay now that that's all wired up we can plug in our battery and bind our receiver so I'm gonna plug in our battery Receiver went into bind mode. I'll hold down the trainer switch while I turn on the radio and that'll put it into bind mode. The light goes off, keep holding down the switch until it locks up. There we go. Okay, now that we're bound, we can unplug everything. Unplug the bind plug, unless you want to do that again. And now we can plug everything back in. Okay, so let's make all of our control surfaces zeroed. With the battery plugged in, the servos are locked so that they won't move when we're adjusting them. So I'm gonna undo this one because obviously it's not in the right spot. Get it to as close as center as you can, which I think that is. And now we're just gonna put any straight object over the control surface to keep it level and then tighten this down. So I have this piece of wood, it's pretty straight. And I'm gonna put this down and then start tightening this. Now that I've gotten the elevator all tightened down, I'm gonna hold it down so that I can snip off this excess. Now let's move on to the ailerons. Okay, now that we've gotten all our control linkages done, let's see how everything moves and make sure that everything is moving in the proper direction. So I'm gonna pull back on the elevator, which should make the elevator control surface go up. And it doesn't, so I'm gonna go in my radio and reverse that. Now when I pull up, it goes up, and when I push forward, it goes down. So that works. Okay, now let's take a look at the ailerons. So because we are using the doulerons, uh, only one of them will move when we move the aileron stick. Which isn't really gonna help us. So we need to go set up the doulerons. Going into your menu, and you can go down to uh, setup, and you do wing and tail. And we're gonna go to doulerons, activate it, go back. And we're gonna see how that works. And actually, surprisingly, I got it right on the first try. So when I push to the right, the right aileron should go up and the left should go down and vice versa. Now, if this didn't work, then you can try reversing the controls inside of your radio. If that doesn't work, then you can reverse the two servos. So instead of the servo that gets going into the aileron, it'll go into the auxiliary and then you switch the other one and you just go back and forth until you get it so that it's moving properly. Now with doulerons, we also have the option of setting up flaps, and I'm gonna do that right now. So coming in here, we go down to our flaps menu, and we see our landing, and we're gonna to go to flaps, and I'm gonna hit the switch down and increase the flaps about 40. Should be good. The plane flies pretty slow on its own, so it shouldn't actually need this. So now when I move my ailerons, you can see they move, and I flip the flap switch, and I get some flaps. But if we fly it like this, with, with all the control surfaces moving like this, it'll be very hard to fly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some dual rates in Expo. Coming into dual rates in Expo, I'm gonna go to aileron and set it to about 50%. I'm also gonna add a little bit of Expo, about 
Now our aileron was moving way too much too. So I'm gonna add some dual rates here. Go down about 75 and a tiny bit of expo in here, about 15%. Now looking back at our control surfaces, you can see how the ailerons are moving much slower and they're moving much less. And our aileron is doing the same. Now this is more than enough than you need to fly, but if you do want to do stunts, you can set it up on a switch so that we have different dual rates. Coming into our radio, we can go over into our setup list and do dual rates combo and I'm gonna combine all my switches to the aileron dual rates. So now when I flip this switch, it'll change my dual rates for all of my channels. So we're gonna go back to our dual rates menu. And now I'm gonna flip this switch and it's gonna give us new values. And I'm gonna make the aileron spot about 75% with no expo. And elevator is going to be 90%. Actually, we can make the aileron a little bit higher, about 85%. So now with that switch down, we have pretty much the same control as we did before when we didn't have dual rates. And then with it up, which is our takeoff and probably landing orientation, we're moving a lot less. So we have a lot more control. So now that we have that all set up, let's check our motor direction. The text on the prop is the direction that we're gonna be flying in. So let me feel this. So we're moving this way, and that's actually how our propeller is gonna scoop air. So we have our motor moving in the correct direction. If it's not, then you just switch to any two of the wires on the ESC and the motor, and then that'll do it for you. So we can attach this when we're ready to fly, but now that everything's set up with our radio, let's button everything up and make it so that all the wires and the hatch and the battery aren't gonna move around when we fly. Now I'm gonna use some Scotch packing tape. This is the heavy duty one. You don't wanna get the packing tape brand because it doesn't stick very well. The heavy duty does really well. So we're just gonna put this on some of the wires just to hold them down and uh, prevent them from flapping around in the wind while we fly. I'm just gonna leave the ESC hanging in here because it doesn't really need to be held down permanently. What I am gonna do though is I'm going to fold down these wires and tape them in place. Now that we've gotten all the wires outside of the fuselage secured down, we can work on the hatch. Okay, so I'm gonna add some tape on the hinge here to reinforce it so it doesn't rip off all the paper. And now I'm gonna add some tape around here so that I can make a little latch with the tape so that this will hold down. Okay, now we have a little tape latch that we can put down during flight. And then when we wanna open the hatch, we can peel up this little tab and then get to our electronics. So let's secure everything on the inside now. Okay, I'm gonna attach the receiver to the side wall right here. And there's some double-sided tape on the back of these receivers. So I'm gonna just peel it off and attach it. Now I'm gonna add some Velcro for the battery. So I got this piece of Velcro and I'm just gonna put it all the way up in the front of the airplane. And now the battery will stay in place. Now all that we have left to do is attach our propeller and we're ready to fly. Okay, to use a prop saver, all we have to do is mount the prop like this and then put the O-ring around one bolt and then around the other. And that's it. Now you have your prop saver on and uh, just center your propeller as much as possible. It'll center up as you're flying. So we're done. That's it for this episode. Next time we'll be flying the Maker Trainer 2. Now I don't necessarily need to show you how to fly an RC airplane because I did that last year, but we'll be having a lot of fun anyway. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.